how long she waited, said, where's this guy, what's he doing? Because I didn't say anything to her. I was afraid that if I said something to her, she may have said thank you. And if she had thanked me for anything, it would only have exacerbated my feelings of shame. Because I deserved no thanks whatsoever. Hypocrites usually don't deserve thanks. And that's what I was. So the next day, and I promise you, in the name of the good Lord, that I do not know what was leading me to do what I did. I had no idea. I did not ever think about the oath of office. Briefing was at 2.30. Shift started at 3 o'clock. This was swing shift. Ended at 11. And um, I went at 2.15 and went to the city clerk's office, and I asked the city clerk if I had an oath of office. And she said, yeah. And she didn't even wait for me to ask for it. She just made a copy of it and gave it to me. I signed it. I think we're supposed to, aren't we? Anyway, I, it showed the date and time. First day I started, uh, March 9th, uh, 1979. And it said, I, Richard Mack, solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully uphold and defend and obey the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the state of Utah. Well, that did it. I'm quitting my job because this now took my feelings of shame to the 10th power. And I was no longer going to be in a position where I had to be a liar and a hypocrite. I never read the Utah Constitution, never read the U.S. Constitution, never cared anything about it. I did it to get a job, a paycheck, so I could have excitement and go out on the high-speed pursuits and kick in doors and have fun and start my career. But I sure wasn't going to pay any attention to that oath of office. Never even thought one thing about it, except at the academy graduation, it was kind of fun to have my wife there pin my badge on right after we took the oath. That was it. It was a ceremony. It was fun. It was a job. And so literally, I'm taking the badge off my chest, off my uniform, and I'm walking to the chief's office. And I was about 10 feet from the chief's office when I said, wake up, Mac. You don't have to quit your job. What did I have to quit doing? Being a liar and a hypocrite. So right after briefing, I went home and got the World Book Encyclopedia that my grandma sold for 20, 30, 40 years, or however long it was, and got the U.S. Constitution and kept it with me the rest of the week. And any time I wasn't on a call, I'm reading the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. And it was great. I loved it. It was really beautiful and it was easy. I didn't think it was that short. But, um, it was. And the founders also knew this thing about keep it simple. Do you know when they were devising the Bill of Rights, they came up originally with 189. Because they really were, I mean, they'd just been through all this with King George III and just fought the war uh, that they should have never won. And so when they said, okay, okay, finally, Patrick Henry, okay, Patrick. We'll give you a bill of rights. Would you let it go? And he held out probably more than any of them. Uh, Rhode Island, New York, Virginia, North Carolina, I think about five states said, if it doesn't have a bill of rights, we're not doing this. What was the Constitution and the Bill of Rights for? Especially the Bill of Rights. They whittled them all, 189 down to 10. There's actually 12, but the, the states, the states ratified 10 basic fundamental rights and freedoms, God-given rights, that government could never violate, encroach, change, alter, or trespass in any shape, manner, or form. And you would think, by looking at our Congress the last 40, 50, 60 years, that the Second Amendment says just the opposite of what it says. Make all the gun laws that you want. That's what they think it says. And if you read what the founder said, you become a little bit like me and say, you know what? I'm not a hunter, which I'm not. I'm not a gun advocate or a gun enthusiast, which I'm not. You could rattle off some assault rifle name, and I would think you're talking about 
a roadster or some fast car or something because I don't know what you're talking about. I know how to shoot guns. I know how to shoot them really well. We're going to have a family reunion on November 20th, and we're going to go to Front Sight, Nevada and do a two-day training course there. And I recommend all of you do that, okay? Okay. But um, I want my daughters especially to know how to use a gun because uh, that's the only thing that really makes them equal with a man. Sorry, but that's the truth, okay? Now, uh, with that, I look at all the Bill of Rights, though, and we don't get to pick and choose. See, some people are journalists, and they say, well, I just support the First Amendment part where it says freedom of the press, or I'm a hunter and a gun nut, or I own a gun shop, so I support the Second Amendment, or I'm a lawyer, so I really want to get into the Fourth and Fifth Amendment things, or I'm a preacher. We have some here. And so I'm really into the First Amendment freedom of religion thing. And what were we were talking about earlier where they shut off the water? Well, do you know who can turn off, turn the water back on? The dadgum sheriff should have already done it. And we had this happen in Klamath Falls back in the, about 2000. And we, I went out there. They invited me out there, and I spoke, and I, and I told the county attorney. I sat with him and the sheriff and showed him my case and said, look, we won. You don't have to take this. And then we had a meeting, and you know what? This actually happened. Fifteen federal agents on the hills watching us at our freedom rally, kind of like this, except it was outdoors, and they have their assault rifles pointed at us. They weren't hiding. They were right there. I mean, you know, acting like big shots, like we were going to do something. And finally the sheriff shows up and uh, whispers in one of their ears and does nothing. And, uh, you know, the, the other guy that filed the lawsuit with me was Sheriff Prince from Montana. And most of the history books say just his name for some reason. I still don't know why today. Uh, but I was the first to file against the Brady Bill. And then Sheriff Prince joined about six weeks later. And he and I, uh, there was ultimately seven sheriffs. But Sheriff Prince and I ended up at the Supreme Court uh, together in 1996, December of 1996, and the Supreme Court uh, ruled in our favor uh, June 27, 1997. But uh, the key point here is you can look that case up, okay? Google uh, Mac or Prince, P-R-I-N-T-Z, versus U.S. And remember, it's Justice Scalia who wrote the decision for the majority. And you can actually maybe print that off and make and highlight some of the key points, and some of the key points are in here. So. Uh, but there's a lot of others. And we told the sheriff there, we showed him that the supremacy, and the county attorney was there, and he goes, oh, the supremacy clause gives all the authority to the federal government. We can't do anything about it. Does the supremacy clause do that? The supremacy says, the clause says, and it's in here, there's a chapter dedicated to that. And there's a chapter dedicated there called uh, legal advisor, because I know most county attorneys are going to tell the sheriffs he can't do this because of the Supremacy Clause. What does the Supremacy Clause say? It says, quote, um, this Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. So only laws that are made in pursuance of the Constitution are supreme. And in fact, you're going to hear some startling things just in a few minutes about the Supremacy Clause that says the, the federal government only has a tiny portion of the supremacy. So where does the rest of the supremacy lie? In the states and in the counties and with the people. Hmm. Amazing. So. So. Now this, this rookie cop in Utah, in Provo, is reading the Constitution, studying the Constitution, studying the Bill of Rights. Now I'm reading this stuff about the Founding Fathers, and I'm being amazed at the miracle of America. Absolutely amazed. And I loved it. I said, man, I wish I'd have studied this stuff earlier. But I loved it. And I repented of the hundreds and hundreds of tickets that I wrote unrighteously to people. 
and that would include about 99% of the tickets that I wrote. 